Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church. Hanley, I'm Pastor Gervais Charlie. This is another Shropshire church. This is the church of St. Mary Canaan. Now, the original church here is 12th century, but it was almost completely rebuilt in 1885 to designs by the architect James Brooks. The east wall of the nave, you can see behind me, that is medieval. And there's, the tower also is largely medieval. Various elements of the medieval church are retained, a lot of the stone was kept. But this is basically a major Victorian rebuild. Now, it's a major rebuild because the old church is actually falling down by the 1880s. And it's either a very, very complicated business of shoring everything up and reinforcing things, or take the walls down to a safe height and then build them up again securely and strongly so that the church will survive for many, many years. And it's still here, so it works. The, because this wall is in between the two parts, it's less insecure than the rest, and that's why it's kept. It's also kept because it's got that interesting feature of the central arch, and then you've got your two smaller arches, effectively your hagioscopes, and it's an alternative to the rood screen. So we'll have a look at that when we look around. So without further ado, let's do that and to Canaan Church. And so here we are at the West End. First things, first in the tower, this is the font. Um, appears to be a Victorian, rather interesting, sort of chunky tub type design. It's currently got a flower arrangement in it, so we can see how it's a fairly decent tub in there. This is the remains of the beer. You can see it's a 17th century beer. It's dated 1667, in fact, and it, the the idea is the carry handles fold down for a table when the coffin is at the front in the church. It's been partially disassembled, as you can tell, the top is missing, just the, the two sides. And that's what it's replaced by a, another wheeled beer, which is obviously a bit more convenient. This is a Victorian building. You can see you've got your two types of stone, the older stone that is the lighter colour, white, whitish grey, and then you've got a redder sandstone on top and then this painted border between the two. Simple benches, um, very Victorian thing, there's the wheel, the beer, it's currently being used as a book sale as is often the case. And there's the War Memorial, um, Sir Michael, Sir William Michael Curtis Baronet, Captain, so he, obviously that's a big house family. Um, and it's important to emphasize this, that it simply is not the case that it's, oh well, the, just the poor go out to fight. The aristocracy in Britain are historically a military aristocracy, and so there's a, a noblesse oblige that they have to go and fight. And therefore, because they supply all the junior officers, they have these very, very heavy losses to the extent that some families are basically wiped out. They just thought the last heir is killed. But of course, most of the people here, most of the men here, are uh, privates with uh, one NCO. We've got um, an old nice window here, nice uh, 18, 1860 window, so this would have probably been in the old church, I expect. And we have uh, resurrection scenes, very sentimental and all that kind of thing. And looking up here then, the aisle, the aisle has now been cleared of seating. In so many cases, it's just not needed anymore. The uh, aisle is a Victorian edition, although you have the uh, imitation, or a rather good imitation, 12th century columns. Not very keen on that particular pulpit, but never mind. You know, it's the, these rather over-the-top displays of marble. There's the eagle lecture, and here is the, the triple arch. 12th century chancel arches are not huge. They're not like the 14th, 15th century, or 13th, 14th, 15th century arches. They, they're like this. This is late 12th century. It's what's called transitional, the transition between the um, rounded and pointed arches. And they're not big. And so they don't give a huge view. So how do you allow people to see through into the chancel? Well, one way is these extra arches one either side. 
pulpit, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I suspect that's not a reference to someone saying, well, I was made to get a pulpit like this. It, then just not very nice, in my view, these uh, variegated marble things. They don't really belong in a little village church like this. Here is a surviving Norman window. It's been retained, the window opening, and then they've done a, a proper Norman-style splayed arch here. So through into the chancel. Now, the chancel, again, um, we have something that would never have been in the church originally. We've got a, a vaulted ceiling, but rather nice. Um, the organ is through here. Now, these are fake pipes and in fact are not connected to anything because the actual organ itself, as we get through the door, as you can see, the organ itself is here, and it's a single manual with pedal board. It's not a big organ, it's not a big church. And here we have all this uh, grey stone. This tympanum thing, I suspect, well, I think that's Victorian, but this is the entrance into the, the vestry, of course. We've got a stone reredos with the crucifi crucifixion with the Virgin Mary and John. We've got um, a Kemp East Window. I'm not a great fan of Kemp. Uh, I think he's, f I'm not very keen on his figures, but he's all right when he's doing something that's for a special commissioner. The off the peg Kemp really does look awful, in my opinion. But it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Artistic opinion. We've got a, a nice Reredos here. This is in memory of Sir William Curtis, third baronet, who died November the 7th, 1870. We've got um, Annunciation and Nativity here. John Eccleston Curtis, youngest son of Sir William Curtis, third baronet. Um, so obviously, that's where the money to rebuild this comes from. It comes from the Curtis baronets with the local big house family, and you see again how this triple arch works, and that is the oldest part of the interior. These really nice radiators, of course, it gets cold here in the winter. Seating choir stalls. This is a memorial to the uh, Reverend James Sidney Dundas Ryder. He that doeth good is of God, and it shows him as the because of the church, you go into the church, and then there's the school as well in the background, and we can tell it's the school because it's the playtime and the children are outside, and then there's a hill behind. Um, Ryder dies in 1959. He's one of the last of the old-fashioned hunting parsons, educated at Shrewsbury School, so as a chaplain in the First World War, and he's shown, because he's very much involved with the school as well as the church, and so the church and school are shown there. But he's one of the last of these, uh, the old-fashioned hunting parsons, one of the last of the clergy to engage very much in those pursuits, and so we shall carefully ignore the pulpit again. Um, here we have a figure of uh, one of the evangelists, says, uh, not a great indication as to who it is. I suspect it's the Apostle John, um, but just for reasons. And then back to the arch here. The arch echoes the old arches, but of course it is not original. And there's everything some kind of painting up there, but that's paint has, that has gone. Be interesting to know if there was a painting up there and what it was. Now here at the back we have a picture of the old church before rebuilding. You can see the, the way that the porch leans crazily and the tower has been uh, was seen better days, shall we say. And that's why it has to be rebuilt. It's just been neglected. There's some cracks in the walls as well. So somewhat neglected in places. But it's a, uh, this is the, the rebuild. And you can see yes, a lot of effort into making a very attractive Victorian Gothic church. And so here we are outside at Canaan. It's all very well to say, well, these medieval churches, there's some pretty church, why was it knocked down? We know it's not why it's knocked down, it was about to fall down. Behind me is the old churchyard cross, the, the tower, the more complicated structure that used to be up there is gone, and it's just got this pyramidal cap on now. 
So we'll have a look around the outside and of course have a closer look at this cross behind me and also have a look at the Norman doorway in the porch. So the first thing that's uh, catches our attention here should be that churchyard cross as I've noted in previous videos the in the Middle Ages you didn't tend to have individual memorials you have a little cross marking a burial site for a, a while but it'd just be wooden and the there'd be a, a general memorial for everybody and that would be the parish cross as you can see it would have been cross shaped the head is missing here they were sometimes quite elaborately carved as here and so here we can see for example we've got uh, here the, the three nails that pierce the saviour one for each hand and one um, for his feet uh, eroded figures around the base the cross itself has carved you can just see there a flower perhaps and the the head is missing they were often they usually have a crucifixion on one side and the um, virgin and child on the other and you've got a niche here this would have a a light in it for festivals you have a put a candle in it and these niches are quite rare outside of Herefordshire and Worcestershire so a rare thing to find here in Shropshire even though we are in Hereford diocese and yeah so there we have that Norman window you can just see one of the reasons it's been preserved is to do with that head having that uh, carving around it and you can see there where the the seam between the lighter and darker stone is porch of course is victorian but inside we have this norman doorway which has been preserved the lintel well over the lintel is a bit of uh, what well, you can tell what day that woodwork is 1647 been partially reconstructed some of those bits are not original norman but basically it's a norman doorway but a dog tooth molding that nice the tower is largely original you see late 12th early 13th century from the look of it the there's a west doorway here not used of course and again it's that transitional style same as that arch inside the window here yes I thought it might very well be is an older window that has been retained because of the stained glass in it because memorial stained glass some of them might get a bit miffed if you throw it out because you're rebuilding the church vestry and heating you've got a chimney with a couple of pots a couple of flues in it and again another normal window here so how it's that window head really they've wanted to preserve here and the other windows are these uh, pointed pointed ones so that's the vestry door the uh, lamp lighting the gateway is a little bit crooked at the moment that's what happens eventually uh, battered by wind and rain and here we have again uh, that window head again is older so there's been this effort to retain what's important and um, what's seen to be important about the old building. We've got these these trees. Keenham is a, it's a little village. I'm probably mispronouncing it. It's probably pronounced Keenham or something, but I didn't look up the pronunciation before coming, which I probably should have in retrospect. So there's the East End. That's pure Victorian. And again, very largely because the old building was threatening to fall down because it's something that however much we may complain on I certainly enjoy doing it complaining about uh, Victorian restoration sometimes the reality is that these buildings were very often neglected in to such an extent that reconstruction was very very difficult and just pulling it down and starting from scratch was often the cheaper option which was a shame but what happens if you just leave a building for hundreds of years or even for the first decades people kind of imagine that because the building has been around for so long they just stay up and of course that's not actually how it works and so there we have it Canaan 
here in the Shropshire Hills, a lovely part of Shropshire, and it's very quiet here on a summer's day and just the, the bird song. Well, thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you until next time.